Well, good morning. Hope you're all doing well. So we're back at it again with a, another ICT Twitter space, Shotgun Saturday. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about what we generally focus on here all the time is the psychology or many times the mental barriers or obstacles that you may encounter or may have encountered, but don't really understand how to overcome them. Uh, today's topic is uh, laying up treasures and keeping the wolves away. When you got introduced to this entire scheme, making money, clicking candlestick charts and indicators flashing on the screen, no matter who it was that got you interested, that moment where you fell in love with the idea or the opportunity of potentially making money, but not going to work for it, it seemed very enticing, didn't it? it? Seemed very, very enticing. And you may have rushed in your pursuit in doing so. And you may have suffered from enticement from influencers, maybe even me. Now, I've done a great deal to try to keep you focused on the things that matter most, but you don't have to have all the materialistic things that come with. You hear that? That's my wife running. <laughs> she was promising me uh, an un uninterrupted hour and she just ran back into the house, forgot her keys. <laughs> These are one of those moments where I really, really, really wish it was a recorded thing because it irks me that it's in there. And that little click, click, click is Bailey running around to try to see where she's at. But when we get involved with this industry, when, I want to say it like this. When I got into it, um, I looked at it as a way of retiring early, not getting rich. Um, I didn't have that aspiration. Um, I just wanted to have a better life. And I was willing to defer it to a later time in my life. I know that flies in the face of what's banded about today, where it's like, hey, look, you know, overnight success is how it's supposed to be. And I'm just very gingerly <laughs> going to remind you that that's really not practical. It's really, it, can it happen for some? Absolutely. But for the majority, it's not going to be true for most of us. So I believe I came into this with the right perspective starting out. Um, but as soon as you make a nice win, have a winning streak, and you have profits accumulating, uh, that tends to change things. And what you may have started out with in your journey and what your pursuits were, and the why as to what you're doing it for, and we're going to talk about that, uh, it'll change. It'll morph into things that you may not have really were inspired by in the beginning. It may even fly in the face of who you are as a person or used to be. And even for folks that have not found profitability, and I've seen some of them online, I've seen some of them trying to be mentors. I've seen some of them trying to be traders or live streamers. And some of them, not all of them, some of them aren't really successful, but they talk. They talk like they are, or they soon will be. And there's nothing wrong with being positive, but there also is a limitation in terms of presenting it in the capacity that you are something that you aren't. Because what that will do is it'll create this expectation in yourself that when you actually do try to trade and when you try to do things and take on risk, which is the primary discussion point today, you'll be afraid. You'll be afraid to take the trades because you've talked a good game. You've talked outwardly in the presence of others. But when it comes time to push the button, when it comes time to manage that risk, to manage your emotions, to navigate the, the psychological 
storm. That real money, real trading on the hard right edge of the chart brings with it. So it's the quiet ones. It's the quiet ones that do all their talking in their journals where no one else is seen that they cheerlead themselves. They don't beat their chest. They don't brag. They don't do any of those types of things. They just quietly encourage themselves in the solitude of their journal where it needs to stay. When we look at this industry, uh, there's a verse. Uh, there's treasure to be desired and oil in dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spends it up. What does that mean? Well, I'll apply it to trading. Okay, it could be used in a, a, a myriad of things, but I'm going to apply that saying to what we do as traders, how we go into the, the world of speculation for profit, and how we many times lose sight of what it is that we're trying to do. For me, it was trying to retire early. I was wanting to retire at 40. And things change over the, the course of my career and how I came up, just like it's going to change for you. But it's important for you to identify what is a low-hanging fruit objective for you. Now, I'm not saying sell yourself short in terms of your life, what would be viewed as successful or not successful. But unfortunately, um, social media, Instagram, you know, YouTube, the influencers effect on individuals. And I would have been very easily wrapped up in all this stuff, too. And if I could go back in time and think about how I felt this insatiable need to feel like I was worth something beyond the normal. I wanted to be outside the range of like everybody else, not because I wanted to be better than everybody else, but because I wanted to feel significant because I didn't grow up with parents that had any love towards me. So I got my love and nurturing from my grandparents so I had a chip on my shoulder. So I was using the market as a way of proving myself worth to me and everyone else around me. That was the wrong approach to going into trading. I wanted to win back my ex-wife. I wanted to do things to have other people look at me and want to be me. I wanted to be that person. And if we had social media, Back in my time, if it happened to be like it is today, where we have Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all these things that you know, are available to distract us and fill our minds up with foolishness and self-worship and idol worship of other people. That's why I, I don't like it when you guys call me things like the, you know, a king or a goat and stuff. like. I don't like that. But I would have been wrapped up in that stuff. In 1992, when I first started, it was available. And I would have fallen victim to it. And who knows what kind of egomaniac I really would have been. And I can see, and I'm sorry if you hear some chong in the background, that's Piper. I had to give her a bone because there's no way I'd be able to do this Twitter space. And if I step away too far from her, she's going to start whining and crying. So let's get through it the best way we can, okay? But the idea of knowing why you're going into this. What's the purpose? What's the reason why you're doing it? It's for the embetterment of yourself, yes. But there has to be something beyond that. Okay? Uh, when you lay up treasure for yourself here in this world, you, you're thinking, well, I want to have a, a nice life. I want to live a nice, successful life where I can do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. And I kind of promote that mindset. I want everyone to have that. Yes. But there's got to be something more to it than that. And for me, when I started doing things for people outside of myself and the things that brought a greater sense of respect for risk, uh, the idea of taking on new risks, 
was a little bit more challenging when I became a father. Because prior to that, I was a cowboy. You know, it was nothing for me to go in there and risk 50% of my account on trades that I had no business being in when I didn't even know how to trade. But when I had my son, Cody, putting aside all the drama that came with how I became a father, uh, that changed a lot of things for me. It changed the way I viewed risk. Um, I looked at things differently. And I thought to myself, when, when I take on risk, when I try to do something to increase myself, am I exposing him to more risk? Am I incurring more risk or potential of losing whatever I've gained in hopes of becoming better in the view of other people outside myself or him? So becoming a father for me helped me mature in a way that I would have not probably been successful at had I not become a father. So in short and in more specific terms, when I look at taking on risk and I place my son in the middle of the conversation, will this next transaction make it easier for me to be a father for him or will it be harder for me to be a father to him? And for, for some of you that don't have children, what that means is if I lose money, it doesn't take food from his mouth. It doesn't keep him in a position of being unclothed. It doesn't mean that we're unsheltered. It just means that now my time, my energy, my focus away from the charts will not be able to be on him because I will be in regret. I will be in sorrow. I will be remorseful for the things I've taken on in terms of risk. So it, dilutes my attention as a father. Now I'm applying it to this real experience I have for myself. For those of you that are listening that don't have children, you don't have anything that is dependent on you. It's just you. You're a young person and you're living a, a life that's free of all that. In many ways, I envy that because there's a lot of emotional turmoil that come with managing children, <laughs> even adult children that don't want to listen. And you have to find that reason to not just, I'm willing to take the risk because if I lose, I'm still young enough, I can make it back. That's how everybody starts in this industry. You, know, you can come in with all the greatest intentions of following you know, risk no more than this much and don't over trade. It's all fine and great until you start pressing the real button, not a demo, not a funded account challenge, <laughs> where the money can actually come out of your own hands. When that money comes in and out of your account, the weight behind that is not something that could be easily explained away. It has to be felt, it has to be experienced. And the worst thing that can happen is you get lucky in the beginning. Because you think you're laying up treasure for yourself and it becomes so easy to think that it's always going to be easy for you. I'm just going to keep stacking up my emerald bricks of dollar dollar bill, y'all. Pick out my next thing I want to spend money on. Pick out my next destination I want to go travel to and experience and put on my Instagram. Laying up treasures for yourself Eh. After a while, and it's very, very short-lived, nobody cares. At some point, no matter how profitable you are, at some point you're going to reach that level where, yeah, I make money. Yeah, I'm doing well, but how many cars can I buy? And how many new things do I have to buy to keep people interested in me? And then you discover what I discovered in my 20s, that nobody really cares. Not, they don't really care about you when you do that. They're living vicariously through your decisions and what you show. And they think to themselves, because they're spending time chasing and pursuing you because you're doing that, they're 
their concern is not about you. The concern that they had about me on America Online was not generally about me. But I wanted to believe it was. And the people that do this, they want to be looked up to. They want to be worshipped. They want to be idolized. Those things carry you only so far. And at some point, no matter how good you are, it stops satisfying. And when it stops satisfying you and you no longer get that, well, return on your investment. And you start seeing the diminishing returns. No matter what you do, no matter what you try to do over the top, spending money, showing this and showing that, it won't bring you any satisfaction. It won't really entice any of your followers or people that look up to you. And you'll become bored in their eyes, or boring rather, and you will become bored by what it is that you're doing. And the long and short of it is, is that's all the wrong things. You're laying up treasures for yourself here. That's Piper. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Me. See that? AI doesn't have a puppy to take care of. A lot of people still think I was an AI. <laughs> I'm a real guy. Real distractions, real family, real stuff. But when you have um, this pursuit of laying up treasures for yourself, that is such a short-lived journey of success. Because at some point, there's, there's just simply nothing else to do. And that's an unfortunate state of mind to be in because I found myself that way in my 20s. And while it's easy for me to go out there and show that I have lots of money and I can earn lots of money and I can create new business ventures and partnerships and do all kinds of things, open up new mentorships, and I'm not doing it. I told you I wasn't. My pursuits, my why I'm doing anything going forward is for the treasures I'm laying up for my family. I want to create memories for them. I want to create memories for myself. And I've robbed myself of that. And it's easy to get caught up in the success. I have lots of students that are making lots of money now. And they're finding success in what they're doing. And they feel good about themselves. And I'm so thankful that they've had that experience. But I don't want you to think that that's all there is to it. Because at some point, if you don't have a child now, you might become a parent later on. And then all of a sudden, you're going to have a greater sense of respect for risk. Because if you found yourself in a position of prominence or affluence, and then you have a child, now all of a sudden, because you are equipping them with a lifestyle that would be above the average lifestyle, you don't want to risk losing it. You want to make sure that they are able to be kept well, provided for. And I found that was the case for me. I, I didn't want to do anything to upset the apple cart. Um, I wanted to make sure that you know when they were raised by me, uh, that I wouldn't be in a position of lack like I was when I was younger. I, I know what it felt like to be sleeping in a car with a one-year-old or less than one-year-old. You know, I know what it's like to be homeless. I know what it's like to have no roof over your head, no money in the bank. I know what it feels like to have a, a seized bank account and having to file bankruptcy. I, I've done all those things before. I've done that. I've, I've lived all that before. And when you have children, or for some of you that are listening, when you have a, a why that it's outside yourself, you do things for other people. They may not be directly related to you. They may not be your offspring. It may be that you want to sponsor uh, the less fortunate. You know, that's an admirable thing. It should not be broadcasted. It should not be out there. Say, I, I support this. I support that person. I'm doing this and I'm doing that because that's your reward then. 
I'm trying to do this, folks. <laughs> Piper's got every noisy toy going on in the background. I apologize. But you have to have some kind of sense of reason, some purpose beyond and outside yourself to do this. Because if you don't, you will take blind risk. You'll do things when you're bored. And if you've listened to the student I just retweeted the interview of, uh, one of my students that was a mentorship student, uh, Alex, he actually mentioned something that was kind of like the inspiration for this Twitter space today. If you listen to him, um, before before I get into it, I want to correct him real quick. Um, Power 3 was not invented by Larry Williams. Power 3 was my interpretation on how to correct his lack of understanding about how to buy below the opening price on bullish days or sell above the opening price on bearish days. So I'm not sure if there was a, a language barrier there on his presentation on the interview or in my discussions while he was learning, but power three is mine. But he mentioned when he was doing his interview, he said that he would say many times he would find himself in, in the trades, taking trades and wanting to lose. Now, I'm sure when I, when I heard that, I was thinking right away that there's going to be people, trolls, many of them, would love to pounce on something like that. And if you look at the the presentation from a whole and then try to apply it to yourself, you probably understand really what he means, but don't want to really want to admit it. And here's my interpretation of what I believe he was trying to say, and I have experienced it myself, and I've seen other students do the same thing. I'm wrangling Piper right now. She's she's by herself. We have obedience school that uh, Scout's part of today. And Piper had hers the other day, so we have to separate them. Puppies from the same litter, uh, they have to be managed differently because they'll build a bond between them and they'll isolate Bailey. And then becomes problematic. But back to Alex and the mindset uh, issue that he mentioned. If you look at the point in the conversation that he had with the funded company, he says that he would be in trades and he wanted to lose because he wanted to be spending time with his girlfriend. What that actually is, it's a form of punishment. And it's the very thing I'm talking about today. When you're trading, and you're trying to build wealth, you have so many other things that you have to balance in your life. You have to balance your personal life, if you have children, if you have relationships. And if you find yourself in a position where you're trying to take trades and your mind is elsewhere, your mind is on someone else, your mind is on your child, boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, spouse, your job, maybe you know, your pursuit is trying to get out of having to go to work. That's admirable. But what if you are in a position right now that doesn't promote the clarity for you to be trading because you have to maintain your employment until you find a better job? Or if you're on the rocks with your employer and you might be losing your job soon because of performance issues or you didn't do something right. Second, we're gonna hear a little bit of nature now. I gotta give her some running room. But the idea of these distractions, like you're seeing me have to encounter and manage while I'm doing this live presentation, yeah, it takes a great deal of focus to trade. And for me, most of you, I'm easily distracted. I have short-term attention span, and I wrestle with a lot of things. If you are in trades or taking trades, or you find yourself taking trades and entertaining the idea that I'm probably going to lose on this trade, but what the hell? I'm going to just roll the dice and see what happens. And you're finding your thoughts linked to something outside of the market or the chart you're in. You're not respecting the risk. And what you're doing is subconsciously punishing yourself because you know that your time should be spent 
in that thing, person, that event, whatever it is that's making itself known to you while you're in a trade, how do you deal with that? Well, you, you close the trade. You stop close the charts. But you know, I'm beneath the spread. I'm in drawdown. The trade is not in my favor yet. Just wait now. Because you know what's going to happen. Your mind is distracted. You're looking at things with a clouded mind. And subconsciously, you're wanting to lose. So that way, you don't feel guilt without purpose. I'm going to say that in a better way. You want to make sure that you don't lose sight of the importance of that thing that's distracting you, that person, that thing that you should be doing other than sitting in front of that chart, taking that trade. That's the more weightier matter. But your impulsiveness, the gambler, they're in the driver's seat. And they and or he or she wants to build up treasure for themselves. Instead of building up treasure for something outside of yourself. For Alex, if you're listening, if you find yourself thinking like that, stop. Don't trade. Only trade when you know that you're doing it to make a better life for you and your significant other. You're going to find that your trading becomes so much easier, easier to manage the risk, easier to manage psychologically, because you're taking the risk soberly. It's not you that's just going to lose the money. It's you and your significant other. It's you and your child that you're supporting, and it's dependent of you. Put it in perspective like this. If you had a one-year-old child who just learned how to walk, you know, there's this little, they don't know anything. They don't know their left from their right. Would you encourage them to go out there and run around in traffic? Of course not. It seems like an extreme, right? But essentially, that's what you're doing. Many times as a trader, you're encouraging bad habits because you're not focused. You're trading for all the wrong reasons. And you're trying to store up treasure, laying up treasure just for yourself. Where you know, eh, if I lose it, it's not a big deal. If I lose this account, if I blow this money, if I fail my funded account challenge, if I lose my funded account, I'll just reset it. That is a piss poor approach to mindset. That is absolutely the worst mindset that you can adopt or start forging. You have to be diligent about risk at all times, and you have to elevate the risk respect of that risk to a degree that will prevent you from trading impulsively. Otherwise, the wolves come in with a wolf. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. That's an expression we say here in the States. What that means is someone has something in terms of a track record. They've done something monetarily. They bought something. They went somewhere. They you. Cloud issue is wolf. And what does a wolf want to do? Come in and devour, steal like a fox in the hen house. They want to take something from. You never see a wolf come in and say, hey, you know what? <laughs> you look know, like you need something extra. Let me drop you off something here at your door. Don't work like that. Cats, tend, cats seem to do that, though. I was watching a video the other day. I saw this cat kept bringing its master uh, whatever it found, neither dead or caught. I've never seen that with any dogs. Maybe they do it too, but I digress. But a wolf, you got to keep them at bay. They come in to steal, kill, and destroy. They steal your purpose for what you're doing it for. Because it's, it's great having a desire to become better. There's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing egotistical about it. It's not greed that you want to be better than you are right now. It's not greed that you want to have more than you have right now. That is not greed. Greed is having more than enough and not appreciating it. That's greed. 
A wolf is fearful. That's a fearful thing. If you were in the woods and you saw a large wolf in front of you, I don't care who you are, whether you had a firearm on your side or not, that scared the shit out of you. If it's gnarling its teeth at you and it's ready to jump on you, <laughs> okay, you're going to respect that risk. And that's what happens when you start doing things outside yourself. And that's what you need to be prepared to deal with that level of risk and managing it. When you have a sense of purpose above and beyond yourself, you're now accountable to no one but you. It's easy to manage the risk. But when you are accountable, when you're accountable for yourself and something or someone else, there has to be a greater appreciation for risk. If you don't manage that risk appropriately and you do all the wrong things, try to get a trade to feel better. You aren't spending the time you're supposed to be spending with your family. But your impulsiveness, the gambler's in the driver's seat, and you're in front of those charts. So I've been there. <laughs> I have done damage that I cannot replace on an emotional level with my own kids, with my wife, that I can't replace that time with. And when I talk to you about these things, and these asshats are in my comment section saying he's railing about stuff about his family. Nobody cares about that. You're a broke-ass person. It's never going to be anybody. You're never going to amount to shit. But you're going to leave comments from somebody that's already lived it and has learned the lessons painfully. So that way you, a broke ass that won't listen to good sound reason logic to keep yourself from making the same mistakes that I have. That's a wolf. These people out here to try to give you financial advice and they're fucking broke. They're broke. They're working still. And they're going to tell you how to manage wealth. They're not wealthy themselves. They have no idea how to become wealthy. Not having even made it that, that threshold yet. That's a wolf. You got to keep them at bay. Keep them at bay. See, a wolf, the only thing about themselves, I'm not thinking about myself. I'm not thinking about myself right now. I'm talking to you, strangers that I'm not going to shake the hand of. We're not going to share a meal together. We're not going to be at a pub having a drink somewhere. But I know my voice carries far now. And some of you may listen to other people say things about what it is I teach. And you might be discouraged or maybe even doubt things. Well, you're seeing a live account. You've seen things called beforehand. You're seeing students that are coming forward. And don't think that I'm trying to discourage anyone. I have sense that we more see saying that because it's more uh, impressive for me as the mentor to see those individuals that could very, very easily humble everybody else out there right now. We're talking tenfold more than what you've seen. And these folks are living their life quiet, appreciative, and not trying to stir up anything. Because that's not why they got into it. They didn't get into this to feel significant. They had a greater purpose of what it is that they were trying to do. Their why for doing it is in and of itself outside themselves. What's a better parent? Someone that's willing to take risks, fly by the seat of their pants, maybe even do things at, at their job that might get them fired while they have a family to take care of. Or someone that shows up, does what they're supposed to do, and takes no additional risks, and does everything with the purpose in mind to provide and maintain the livelihood of their self and their family. Clearly, it's the second. But the second is not attractive right now. That's not logical to anybody right now. That's boring. That's not exceptional. But in fact, it is exceptional. Because most of the things you see online is fake. It's an illusion. You're only seeing that fleeting moment where they did something right. 
and the lack of consistency, longevity, there's no evidence of that. But you'll buy into the image of it all. If I was a wolf, really a wolf, I could fleece all of you and you'd pay me whatever I want. And I would feed you just enough to keep you going. And I can get way more richer than I already am. It's not my purpose. I'm spending my Saturday pacing around my pool in my pajamas still. <laughs> Walking around in slips in a wife beater. Hair uncombed. I ain't brushed my teeth yet. Just had breakfast. And I'm spending my time demonetized with you. Coaching you, counseling you, encouraging you not to lay up treasure just for yourself. You have to have something outside yourself for the, for the reasons why you're doing it. And if you do that, it becomes a lot easier. You would think, oh no, it's harder to be a parent. I loved it when I was a single parent. I loved it. Because you know what it did? It forced me to be responsible when I wasn't really responsible. I think if you were to ask me before I had a son, if I was responsible, I, I would then at the time say yes, but knowing on what I know now about myself and really what I was doing at 51 years old, I really wasn't responsible. I was reckless. I was doing everything with wild abandonment, just pursuing some greater experience than I had the last time. And when I lost my wife, I wanted to be a womanizer because I felt that, you know, I needed to do that to make myself feel better and to prove to everybody and other women that I'm worth being with. When the things I was doing was not something a woman would want to be with. I was not monogamous. I jumped around, slipped in beds and slept with married women. That's nothing to be proud of. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you, some of you put me on a pedestal. I'm not a saint. I've made bad choices as a human being. I've made terrible decisions and choices in my personal life. And I'm talking to you because money will cloud your vision and you won't see the mistakes you're about to make. These things carry deeper scar tissue than losing money in a trade. I promise you, you have no idea the sense of remorse and regret that holds deep grips on me that I've done to myself that were self-inflicted because I didn't know any better. No one sat down with me and told me, this is what you should have done. This is what you shouldn't have done. I was reacting emotionally and, and impulsively thinking that I needed to do that to replace the pain I was going through. The lack of self-respect or self-worth that I had when I was a younger person. But you don't hear that now. When I'm talking, everybody says I'm arrogant. Everybody says I'm overconfident. Everybody says I'm a prick. That's because I've learned lessons that enable me to have this mindset. I'm not afraid. I know I can go out there and make money. I can touch anything and make it gold. But because I can doesn't mean, doesn't mean that I should go out there and flaunt it in front of everybody. And you shouldn't either. That's a, that's a wolf mentality. Look at me. Yours is for me. Mine is for me. That's a wolf. When you look at a lion... When a pride goes out and hunts, they don't go out and kill in the lion that has the death grip on the throat of the gazelle or whatever it may be. It basically did the kill. The other ones may hold it down, but that kill was by suffocation by one lion. She's got a hold of its throat and waits for it to give up the ghost. They take that meat home. They share it together. So they take on the risks of going after that prey, not for a single purpose of feeding their one single belly, but that purpose is the same mindset that you should have as a trader. You have to have something outside yourself you're responsible for. I promise you, if you are not doing that, you can tell me, you can show me statements, you can show me certificates where you got funded, you can show me payouts, but I'm going to tell you in the quiet, in the, the, the moments where you're by yourself, 
You're shitting bricks. You're in trades you knew damn well you shouldn't have been in, hoping that it pans out in your favor. You're doing so many resets that the public doesn't even know about. That's the real you. And you're getting caught up in the idea of showing an illusion. Here's what I did. Look at me. When you just take a step back and say, what have I been doing right now? Up to this point, what have I been doing? Have I been doing things that are for the betterment of something outside of myself? Am I leaving something behind? For me, generational wealth is important. More so now than it's ever been because my children aren't equipped yet to be able to manage the difficulty that the mental aspects of trading bring with it. They have amazing weapons at their disposal, but you know what they have also? Young minds that are very, very impulsive. Just like yours, just like mine was. Think about it. When you join the military, Air Force, okay? Do they just let anybody just sign up and go in there, hey, jump in this raptor, fly it around, <laughs> do whatever you want to do, try it out, you know, take it a spin? No, of course not. Why? Why wouldn't they want to do that? Because it's worth a lot of money. And they can hurt themselves and other people in collateral damage. So there has to be some growing that's required and maturity. And I'm hoping that my children will grow into a greater appreciation for what it is that's available to them. But just because they have the ability to have enigma, recklessness, over-trading, trying to be in there before it happens... Trying to predict the setup, not take the setup. There's a difference. We can anticipate a setup, but you're predicting, oh, yeah, this, by the time I enter, then there really will be a reason in there. You know what that feels like. You've been doing it for months, blowing accounts, trying to do it. Because you're taking on risk in and of yourself. The why that you're doing it is just you. And why you lie to yourself and say, I'm comfortable. If I lose the account, it's, a, it's no big deal. That is a piss poor mentality. Every single account, every single transaction must carry with it a great respect for risk. Because what you're doing is no different than someone that goes to Las Vegas with their life savings and pisses it away. Flies back home and wishes they never had the idea of going out there in the first place. Because they got lucky one other time. They went with their life savings this time. They put it all online and said, hey, I'm going to take the gamble. I'm going to take that bet. I'm going all in. And then the flop doesn't work out for you. And everything you put up is gone. You can only do that so many times, folks, with the skill set that's not quite there yet it's easy to quit it's easy to quit when it's like that and you deny yourself opportunities that are before you there is treasure to be desired and you can take this and turn it into something beyond your wildest dreams or you can destroy everything with impulsiveness. Doing things that you shouldn't have done. Thinking about things you shouldn't have been thinking about. Worrying about emotions. That have no, being, no basis for being in the process of what it is you're trying to do. Thank you, Scout. I have an iron fence around our swim pool and she's still small enough to go through the the rails of my fence so she, they've never gone through it before but she just, just discovered that she can do it and the look on her face when she came back in she's like oh i can get out of here and then she saw me she's like oh crap <laughs> dad caught me yep that's all it so i i want you to think about how this is applicable to you 
Because if you are a rebel, if you are a cowboy gunslinger out there that, hey, you know, I'm going to gunsling with the best of them. And I'm the best right now until the best shows up in front of you. And if it comes on your back, oh, whatever. It was fun. I'm, not, I'm living my life. Pedal to the metal. Full bore. Never slowing down. You might want to take some inventory and change some things. Because this game is won by the long game, not the short game. Take a step back for a second. Step out of yourself. Pre present this entire industry right now as it is, as a TV show. What do you see? Get rich quick. All you have to do is pay the reset. It's not your money you're losing. But the fuck it ain't. It is your money that you're spending on those resets and can't get funded or can't hold on to the fund account once you get it. So that bullshit is absolute money. What are you doing with? Are you being a good student with that money? How could you possibly expect to be rewarded with more when you can't even manage the little that you work with right now? And you think something magical is going to happen when you get funded? Something magical is going to happen if someone laid down a, a, a large sum of money and said, hey, we don't know that much about you. But here, manage this for us. That's pipe dreams. I don't sell that here. I talk to you in a manner where I want you to take stock in it. Think about what it means to you. What does it mean for you to have a greater sense of risk when you have the perspective outside yourself, not just, oh, if I lose money, eh, it's no big deal. But if you lose money and you have someone that you're depending or that is dependent on you, that is entirely something altogether different. See, trading after you read a book, watch some ICT videos and go to this person's workshop or whatnot, you have the inspiration, but you don't have the mindset. Mindset has to be forged. You know how get now here's how you get the mindset through losing your ass. That has to happen. That has to happen. Every success story, every single one of them has had a ass that has been chapped. They've learned something. They looked at it from a different perspective after losing. And some of you think that you're going to just walk through here, waltzing through, like everybody's going to part ways, let the man go through, and adversity isn't going to lay a hand on you. Draw that in, going to visit your house. Losing trades, that's a foreign language. We don't speak that around here. Until it does happen. And all of a sudden your ass gets twisted. Oh my goodness, they're changing the algorithm. What the hell is this? This candle was supposed to be a fair value gap. It didn't respect it. Look at this. This was supposed to be buy side liquidity. They ran it. Now it should go the other way. And it just kept going up. Hello. Welcome to the real game. Mindset, psychology, that's what these Twitter spaces are all about. It's not me bloviating nonsense to the broke asses that want to comment. These are people that want to tell you, don't waste your time. But they're going to work on Monday, making less money than you probably do at your job. Because they're miserable. Or they're selling something that can't get sales with. And they're miserable. I wish, and this is not me giving myself self-love here. I'm not bragging when I say this. I wish that I had the resource that I'm making available to you when I started. I swear to God Almighty, I wish I had it. Because I did not have 
any, any navigation laid before me where this is what I shouldn't do, this is what I shouldn't do. I had to learn through pain. And by God's grace, he then stepped in. He joined the chat. And I try to talk to you in a manner where maybe it is uncomfortable. And you should be thankful that it is. Because the greatest life lessons come through pain. It doesn't come through the feel-good moments. Think about it. When you have a feel-good moment, when you have a good winning trade, pay attention, folks. This is the part that really matters. Just won something. Got a nice trade. Got funded. Got a payout. Woo! Feels good, don't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Little pig, little pig. Let me in. The wolf shows up. You forget about how good it felt to do that and what you did to earn it. And you got to run. You got to run. You get to that next opportunity. You need to get inside of another house. You got to move. It's moving day. The wolf's on your ass. We got to move. My brother, he's got a better house than me. I'm going to trade what he's trading. You might get success. You have that feel good moment. Oh, man, everything I'm touching is just working. I'm a trader. I'm a natural. Little pig, little pig. Let me in. Once again, that wolf shows up. Oh, shit. You and your brother. Your trading partner. Your study partner. ICT students. We got to go. It's time to move. It's moving day. My brother got a YouTube channel. He's doing this with smart money concepts. Let's go. You run on over there. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Win, win, win. Little pig, little pig. Let me in. Something different about that third one. See, he had foresight. He didn't make a house out of straw where the wolf can come in and blow it down. And the second brother didn't make his house out of straw. He made it out of wood and sticks. A little bit more sturdy. A little bit more rhyme and reason in his trading plan. One more PD array. But still not quite enough. They had to run the big brother's house. Good old IC fucking T. His house is made out of brick. And the wolf can't come and blow that bitch down. Keep on knocking, motherfucker, because you ain't getting in. In my house, we all eat, and we're not eating. What's different? Experience, foresight, preparation. Majority of you want to get out there and you want to build a house of straw. That means I want to get funded and get a payout because that's the visibility that you have. That's all you have right now. Give me shelter from the storm. Might get wet still, but it's better than being outdoors. Outdoors is working for a living. The nine to five rat race. Everybody wants to get out of that. I don't give a shit how much money you make. Some of you have a little bit broader perspective, but not quite as far as it should be. It should be with a great deal of preparation for adversities. So you might say, okay, you might be that second little pig where you see other people out there rushing to get paid out. You heard some Twitter spaces like this in the past by me, and well, it's going to be something different about the way I do it. I'm going to look past that. I want to get to the point where I can buy a fancy car. Because that's the, it's not just the payout then. I have a goal. I'm going to go out and get myself a Lamborghini. Going to get myself a McLaren lease. The wolf's at the door. So you're creating bills without the trust in knowing that the providence 
and safeguarded income that is absolutely available to someone that has a well-written, well-generated trading plan and money management strategy and has already made preparations for adversities. That's the person that went through the full year with no real trading. That's the person that did all the back testing, finding their own model, learning what it is that's going to cause them to be reckless. And they're building their house with brick because they know there's wolves out there. They know that the rain's coming and storm will beat against that wall and beat against that roof. And they want to make sure they have a sound structure around them. A mindset that is at peace, not trading impulsively because they want, they want, you want. I used to be a wolf. Now, I don't eat lamb and I don't eat pork. I want you to do well. I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed. I want you to have everything that your heart's desire. But I don't want you to lose sight of the costs that's going to be associated with it. And never lose sight with the adversity that are looming out there that you think that you're going to be the exception to. It isn't going to touch you. It isn't going to happen to you. When you build your trading plan and you risk the amount of money that allows for imperfection, even when you see yourself doing well in the future, do not take exaggerated risk. And the easiest way that you can start forging that mindset now is having some measure of accountability that is outside you. It doesn't mean... Go to your spouse who doesn't support you right now that thinks what you're doing is foolishness. Can you imagine? I mean, my wife sees the fruits of all this stuff. And still, I can tell you with great honesty, if I told her back then, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm starting out because I I was doing this already before I met her. She would have shot down everything. And it would have pissed me off. I probably would have got rid of her. She's very, very opinionated. And that would have affected me mentally. So God's perfect timing, he brought us together after I was already established. Some of you might be looking at the idea of this presentation thinking, this sounds like nursery rhymes and bullshit. (laughs) Yep, it went right over your head. You ain't going to be successful. You want the secret weapons, but you don't want the user's manual. You want to go out there and blow your fucking heads off, mess around, trying to be Wyatt Earp. You don't want to understand how to do it safely. What keeps you in the game long enough to get what it is that you're seeking after? See, that third pig built a house of brick with a good, strong foundation. And I teach with that mindset. I want you to learn properly. Can I go out there and throw some Mickey Mouse shit together just to sell some coursework and make some fast money? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I also know human nature. 99% of you are going to be in a rush. You're not going to follow rules. Even my own private mentorship students. I'll lay down some instructions on them. Very plain. And it's amazing how many of them ignore the plain text of do this, don't do that, or you're disqualified. (laughs) And they don't listen. And they've been with me for years. They actually paid me. Is it me mentoring them poorly or is it them themselves not following instructions? It's them themselves not following instructions. So if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to mentor, if I'm going to teach, I'm going to pour myself into it. And I'm going to do it exactly how it needs to be done. I'm not out here trying to get the, well, approval from any of you. I live this. And you're seeing students that are 
courage enough to go out there and make themselves known and the fruits thereof. I could say, hey, look, all my students that are profitable, since you have respect for me, you know, answer all those people out there to have things bad to say about me and what it is that you've spent time and money learning. Go out there and show them what for. I'm not a weak little minded bitch. I don't need that. And they don't need to do it. But some people are just built differently. They just want to go out and do it. Because like me when I was younger, I have a chip on my shoulder. I need to prove self-worth. Because you don't know what it feels like to be a child that your own parents don't want nothing to do with. And one of them had to threaten the other one's life just to make sure that you were born. That's some heavy shit when you put it on you. So I spent my life building something in me to make my parents understand that that shit didn't stop me. I didn't grow from the same vine they did. I cut myself off. I planted myself here. And all of you are my fruit. I'm living for all of you. What am I getting paid right now? There's dozens of people that are I'm doing right now that you're listening to. And they're going to put it on their YouTube channel and they're going to monetize it. And folks, if you're doing that, I don't care. Pay your bills. I don't care. But I'm not monetizing it. I could. These are all things I could be putting on my YouTube channel. And yes, I might drop some F words once in a while, but as long as it's not happening in the first 30 seconds, they won't, they won't demonetize it. I do this for a reason. I want you to understand that I'm investing my time. I'm investing the wisdom that I gained over hardships in the hopes that you'll appreciate the fact that I could be doing something else on my fucking Saturday mornings. I could be doing something else besides this where I'm not getting paid to do this. Not getting chump change from YouTube, $25,000, $28,000 a month. You already saw I can do that in a week. Real money. Some of you stand in your own way. And you don't understand when I'm trying to ask you to take stock in yourself. What is it you're doing wrong? That's an uncomfortable thing to, to pursue and try to in investigate. What is it you, you're doing incorrectly? All of my personal students that are profitable, they have done that. And they don't hide from it. Ask any of them that are making fucking real money, real money. Hey, what did you struggle with most? What do you struggle with still today? What was your greatest learning experience? What are your weaknesses? They're easily answering you what they are. They're not like these fucking misfits online hiding like they don't have any weaknesses at all. Only showing you wins, only showing you the sweet stories, showing you shit that mentorships and coursework sells will yield them in terms of profit. The real people, the ones that have really gone through this process correctly, they didn't lose sight of what makes them go off the rails. And sometimes they may still wrestle with it. That's the reality of trading. Think about it. I, I, if you strung all together all these Twitter spaces I've done since I started doing them. And let's just say I was writing a book. And it was everything I said in these Twitter spaces, but composed inside of a textbook. What not to do as a trader and how to think correctly. That's a brilliant title. Nobody's buying that fucking book. Nobody's buying that book. Not one person's going to buy that book.
how to learn to trade with a demo account over 12 months. Nobody's buying that fucking course. Nobody's buying that book. Nobody's watching that playlist. But that's the real shit. Everybody that sits in and listens to these Twitter spaces, you have exactly what's required because you want to know how to think. You want to know what's going to derail you. You want to be counseled. You want to be encouraged. I'm not showing you my chart. We're not even talking about the open, high, low, and close. We're not referring to any specific setup here. We're talking about what's going to be the definitive ground bottom of the road. You know, this is this is down to brass tacks, down to the chrome. What's the success or failure in you? You. It's always you. And some of you aren't equipped to accept that fact. You think it's going to be, well, it's going to be convenient for me to blame ICT because he doesn't trade with life funds. Whoa, whoa, something's wrong with that fucking excuse now, isn't it? It's going to be real convenient to be able to blame this market today. Well, I told you no trade this day. Oops. It's going to be real convenient for some of you to say, yeah, I tried to trade the ICT bullshit. I watched a couple of videos. Mm, to be honest, it was probably three of them. Never took any notes, but this guy talks too much. He's full of shit. So that's the reason why it don't work. Well, that's you, buddy. Half ass Allen ain't going to make it in here. Half ass Allen is not going to make it in this industry. You have to pour yourself into it. And you have to have, have a greater purpose in mind that is not in, limited to just you. When you're accountable to more than just you, you're going to trade differently. You're going to think about that risk differently. You're not going to say, fuck it, man. It's 15 contracts if I blow the account. It's just a reset. Shit, it's easy. They're doing discounts now. Let's just go at it. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is you're creating... This mindset that, well, you know, I don't have to be all that diligent about what it is I'm doing. I can roll the dice like I'm at the casino. And if I get lucky and have a lottery win, look how cool it's going to be if I show my payout on this big exorbitant amount of money that wasn't acquired by skill. Listen, folks, people win the lottery all the time. It was no mental acrobats that require of them to be able to do that. They foolishly spent their fucking money on this dumb shit, and the chances of that happening were so next to nothing, but yet it happened for them. And I knew a person. His name's Butch. Stop it. Piper's going after me. <laughs> Get off me, girl. Come on now, stop. It's one of these high dollar slips. I don't want them all tore up. Hear that? Materialism. <laughs> stop it, girl. This guy was a block layer, a laid brick. And he's, uh, he probably had about three teeth in his whole head. Bald, drove around with a trash bag duct taped over his passenger side window for years. Never replaced it. He had a young, uh, young girl working at a laundromat in Middle River, a little blonde haired girl. She was the attendant. And obviously he's too old for her and you know he's probably a dirty old man mentality. He would go in there and play on their little slot machines and illegally they would pay out, you know, if you won. That happens a lot in the bars and stuff around here still today. But uh, they gotta trust the clientele that's being paid out. And he was one that they could trust that if he did it, he'd get paid out. You're not making much. And in fact he's probably spending more money than he was actually getting out of doing it. Long story short, he went up and said, I want to get a scratch off. And the girl that he had the fancy for said, no, Butch, the big game tonight is $30 million and took his dollar bill. Instead of buying the scratch off, this young lady processed the fucking winning ticket. And he cussed her. And the very next day, he's on the shoulders of Max Waite, which was his boss, carried around on the news. He's $30 million rich. What the fuck? 
Exactly. And the first thing he went out and did was bought himself a Ford Mustang, a green, ugly-ass fucking convertible Mustang with a tan top. How fucking stupid. That's new money for you, though, folks. Oh, shit, I just made $30 million on a lottery win. Let me go out to the dealership, tell them, here's the proof I won, because they'll do that. And they gave him the shittiest-looking fucking Mustang I've ever seen in my life, and everybody in the neighborhood laughed at him. So what'd he do? He went out and got himself a Corvette convertible. Red. I was envious as shit. That was pretty. That was pretty. That red would look good, and I don't like red. Still, everybody complained and said, dude, what the fuck's wrong with you? You just made $30 million. You're buying that? Just like some of y'all. You made all this money selling mentorship, ICT, and you got these little-ass Chevy Corvettes. Where's your big dollar cars? Well, if you know anything about Maryland, <laughs> the roads around here, you just can't drive these really, really low-profile cars without tearing them up. And Chevy's. Their Corvette, that's my dream car. I was wanting that all my life. And I've been a Corvette man all my life. So he trades his Corvette in and gets himself an orange burst Lamborghini. Ooh, pretty. Pretty. Pretty fucking wide, too. And got it stuck inside the Taco Bell drive through Tore up the fucking rims, had to get pulled out by a wrecker. How about that? New money. New money. You think that's stupid? He traded in once he got his rims fixed. Got a Ferrari. And didn't get the vibe that he was hoping for it. Traded the Ferrari in for the same fucking Lamborghini that he gave up. That he replaced the rims for. Now, what is that? That's Little Pig number one. Straw house. Chasing shit. That means nothing. You know what he ended up doing? Still going in that laundromat. I think he got $13.5 million because he did the cash option. I would have done the annuity. And still bet on that fucking little poker machine that wasn't going to pay him anything. What did he really want? He wanted that girl. And you know what? He got her. Took her to Atlantic City. They stayed up there a couple times. And not to be crude, but he hit it and quit it. I've seen her in recent years. She's a mess. And he's been to Atlantic City. He's been to the local casinos here. And you're probably saying, what the hell does this got to do with anything? This is what some of you are thinking like. And if you get these big payouts, you're going to act just like this guy. He spent and wasted millions of dollars in casinos trying to get more. You're not satisfied with $13.5 million? $13.5 million, friends. Listen, you're set for life. You're done. You're done. If you manage it appropriately, your family can live off of that. Once you're gone, I'm not aware of where he's at today because we're talking about something about 10, 12 years ago. Actually, you know what? My son, Caleb, is... No, we're talking about something 24 years ago. Man, good grief. Time really flew. I don't know where he's at today. I don't know if he has any money left or not, but... He's chasing that moment. That feel-good moment. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Thought I lost track, didn't he? No. When you have a win, when you have these success stories... They're fleeting moments. They only last momentarily, and they're gone. They're gone. And you have to go out and try to get something else, something new, some new candy to share with your friends. But you got to keep the bigger piece for yourself because greed. But you want everybody in the neighborhood to say, wow, look at Tommy's bike. Shit. I wish I had a bike like that. Wow, look at him, man. He's dressed out. Look at his drip. Shit. His kicks are awesome. I'm going to get a pair of them. I don't care what I got to sell on Hawk. I'm going to get that. That watch. Look at that watch. Wow, he spent that much? Man, if I had a watch like that, people would really respect me. 
Let me tell you something, folks. I have watches that cost more than anybody that's an influencer in YouTube finance for Forex or futures. I have watches that cost more than their fucking houses, okay? I don't need to show you that. Who gives a shit about that? They're not, they're not good investments. When the shit goes upside down, that watch is going to do nothing for me. Nothing. My Corvettes aren't going to do shit for me. The money in the bank ain't going to do nothing for me. Your greatest lessons are going to be through pain. For the atheists in the crowd. <laughs> If God was real, why does he allow suffering? Because we are stubborn. And we don't want to listen unless it's hurting. You know you shouldn't smoke. You know you shouldn't eat fast food. You shouldn't be eating McDonald's horse shit. You ain't even food. And you know it ain't good for you. You sit down in front of a, a physician, they'll tell you, you shouldn't eat that stuff. It's bad for you. Yeah, I know, doc, but you know. In moderation. Moderation to use every fucking other day. Now, all of a sudden, fast forward, you got bad health. You're overweight, cholesterol off the charts, blood clots, everything. You got everything wrong with you. Now, all of a sudden, now, because you got chest pains, now because you can't walk across the floor a little bit before you're winded, now you want to listen to the doctor's advice. Good doctor, please give me the good news. Give me some good news. I need to feel good. If you listen to that physician and somehow turn your health around, what are you going to remember most? You stuff in your face with that poison, calling it food, and convenience? Or are you going to remember, this doctor saved my life and caused me to make a change in my lifestyle? Pain. Pain. Nobody wants to exercise. Nobody wants to change their diet until they have a heart attack. Nobody wants to do things differently. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stop drinking and driving if I ever get in an accident. And, you know, something bad happens. Some of you just need that kind of drama before you pay attention or think about the potential risks. But are you going to drive your car drunk with your kid in your car? Are you going to willfully go out and get yourself in a position where you can get drunk, knowing that you're going to drive your own child around with you? If you're sane, you would never make that decision. But if you're by yourself, you don't have any accountability to anyone. You're going to do what many people do. They get out and get inebriated, self-medicating themselves because they hate their life. They've made their choices in life and they're too lazy to change i mean hey it is what it is and you go and you drive drunk you might get lucky you might get home safely one time you might not i have family members that are gone now because of drunk drivers but those life choices have painful consequences and they are the most impactful learning experiences you never learn anything by wins. You never learn anything by the sweet, sweet savor of profit. It's always taught in drawdown. It's always learned in loss. That's why suffering is permitted. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Your best learning comes from Getting your finger burnt when you touch that pot. Your parent told you, don't touch that pot. What's that mean? Oh, yeah, now you know. Now you know. Welcome to fuck around and find out. Population increased by one. That's the reason why suffering exists. And you should not be hateful or spiteful when you have losing trades. Because there are opportunities for you to improve. You're in drawdown. I counseled someone that sent a tweet. Uh, I'm so disgusted with myself. I lost 50% of my account in the last few days trying to do something, this and that and the other thing. Well, what's the rule around here? We don't piss and moan. Pissing and moaning are for failures. You want to be a failure? Do that. 
Because all your attention, your energy, and time is being devoted to something that's not going to yield any fruit to you at all except for rot. Embrace it. So you know what? I don't have it figured out yet. I'm not discouraged. I am excited. I'm excited how I'm going to take these piles of shit that I just simply wait around and let them calcify and become hard. And I'll use them like a fucking stepping stone. And I'm going up. I'm not going to struggle. I'm not going to wait around in this shit. I'm going to just sit still. And that shit will harden up. Then step on top of it. Just like cement. It'll carry you to a higher plateau. You can always buy new fucking shoes later on when you can afford it. Right now, it is what it is. Everything is temporary, folks. Everything. And success, if you allow it to be, it too can be temporary. You don't want temporary success. You want to have a life experience where you have so many milestones that you can look back on and say, at the time when I was walking into this and it wasn't happening to me and I was feeling the pain and the struggle, I felt like it was the end. I had to quit. But something inside me said, you know what? This is a learning opportunity. It's just like a bad day at work. You still got bills to fucking pay. Suck it up, buttercup. You got somebody that's depending on you. You don't have a child? Okay. You do. It's your future self. Are you trading with your future self in mind? Because you probably aren't. You're recklessly gambling. You're trying to do Mickey Mouse shit. And then bitching about, well, you're getting cartoon results. That's what you're doing. You're out here looking at people trying to be icons in the industry, and they're all comic strips. They're comic strips. They're fucking cartoon figures, okay? These people have no wisdom. They have no experience in being successful long-term. But they're going to be your source. You're going to draw from them like a well and the water's tainted. They're lying to you. They're giving you piss-poor advice and they're giving you the image routine. Hoping that that'll distract you long enough so you can keep them getting paid. I want to see what you all do. I want to see how you live. Whose lives you impact. What you do with it once you're there. I enjoy doing this, but I have the latter part of my life to sit back and observe what my students do with this. How do you live your life? Do you live your life like an asshole? Are you a pillar in the global community where you're not trying to be all about you? Are you making an investment in other people's lives? Are you impacting other people's lives in a positive way? That's why I'm doing this. I know all the things I have in this world is bountiful. I'm blessed. I am absolutely blessed, Father. I'm so thankful that you favored me undeservingly. I did not deserve any of these things. I did not deserve to be chosen to have this understanding. And many times I fall on my face as an advocate for him because I don't have the ability to control myself sometimes. But I don't think that he chose me foolishly. I, he knows my heart. He knows my intentions. And when I talk to you this way, in a, ma in a manner, in a capacity that is not yielding anything monetarily to me, it's not giving me anything except for peace of mind knowing that I've instilled in you experience, wisdom, life experience that unless you go through these painful events, you may not be of the mindset to, to see it as a learning experience. It could be the ticket out of here and you don't ever want to do it again. That wasn't for me. I took lots of breaks and I called it quitting. 
But there's a lot of wrong ways to do this stuff. And it's always packaged as the easier shortcut. There is no shortcut. There's no way around the hard one step in front of the other journey. It's Piper chilling up a pair of swimming goggles. My son Cameron's going to be upset about that, but it serves him right. He left them on the ground. I told him to pick them up. Life lessons. He'll remember that now. <laughs> he paid for it with his money. You're a terrible father. You're letting your dog chew up his thing. Save your parenting advice. I have children that aren't doing what I want them to do. Hardship is a lesson. It's a good taskmaster. He's not going to want for anything, even though he has to go out and buy another pair of goggles. So anyway, there's a lot of wolves out there that are wearing sheep's clothing. They look gentle. They look approachable. I want to go over there and pet that, that sheep. This person over here, real quiet. The only thing negative to say, they're always positive. Buy my course, buy my bullshit. Are they really what you think they are, or are they a wolf? I don't know. That's for you to determine and decide and experience on your own. Throughout this life, I've been a lamb. I've been one of those little pigs and little pigs, and I've jumped from one thing to the next. And I live in a house of bricks now. It's rooted in my faith and the creator who obviously made this accessible to me. Because if he didn't want me to have it, I wouldn't have it. I would fail in front of all of you. And I wouldn't have anybody doing anything with the transferable knowledge that I've made available to all of you. And I know what my reward is because I live my life through helping all of you. It's not always easy being out here in front of you like this where I'm unfiltered. Many times, and today's not one of them though, but many times I've cringed at my presentation. And some of you like those the most. I don't like them. They're embarrassments to me. But I did very, very... Um, um, my best. I did my best today to try to stay on focus and try not to go off the rails. I, I did a few times, but I was able to pull back in. <laughs> I wanted to do a whole lot more, believe me. But I think there was an audience that heard what they needed to hear today. It may not be for all of you, but it's okay. And like I said, Alex, he, uh, he inspired this one today with his comment about how he wanted to lose. And that's self-punishment. And I want you to think about that in closing. I want you to think about how if you're in the trade, if you're about to take the trade and you know that you should be somewhere else doing something else, don't trade. Because your mind is not going to be on following price action. You're not going to be following the institutional order flow. You're not going to be checking continuously. If the signatures are supporting your trade idea, you're going to be thinking about you know, I wish I'd have done this. I better, I better take care of this. As soon as this trade's done, I'm going to go do that very thing. But right now I got this to worry about. And then all of a sudden your subconscious rises up and says, you know what? You need to learn some humility today. And you allow it. You invite it. And you encourage it. Knowing at that very moment that you know that you have lost the plot. You know that that trade is next to 100% going against you. It's not going to pan out. But what do you do? You stay with it. You stay with it. You're applying the mindset that you should subscribe to when you are following your rules and your model. You're applying it there. See how the miswiring in your head is? It's self-inflicted. You need to elevate the purpose behind why you're trading a specific model that you trust, that you've seen the fruits of it by backtesting. Does it really exist? 
Some of you don't believe it. You just hear me say it. And if I say it, then it must be the truth. And I'd always challenge all of you, don't believe what I say. Go into the charts and see it for yourself. Because once you see it, no one, not anyone, is going to be able to convince you otherwise. And that is strength. That's not just confidence. That is strength. That's power. You can tap into that anytime. No one can strip that away from you. No one can take it from you. No one can rewrite it. They can't discount it. They can't replace it with some other Mickey Mouse horse shit, indicator-based horse shit that doesn't make any fucking money long term. Gimmicks. We don't have them here. You have to find your purpose for following that model. And when you know what it is, the same way that you can hold on to a losing trade and have the conviction to hold on to it, come hell or high water, I don't give a shit what these fuckers do. Market maker this, bitch. I'm not getting out. How about that? Oh, yeah? You going for my stop? Fuck you. I'm taking it off. I'm going to show you. Well, well done. Well done. 35% drawdown. Well done. Nobody could have done it better than you. Man, look at that. No one's doing it like you. <laughs> yeah. What happens if you really listen? What happens if you really, really listen and you put some measure of accountability on yourself? Now, I'm not talking about stressing yourself out. I'm talking about real accountability where you're doing things for the purpose of not only and bettering yourself, but something outside yourself. It could be a relative. It could be a spouse. It could be a relationship, girlfriend, boyfriend. Could be a niece or nephew. Uh, my one, na uh, one niece, she's, uh, she's in a foster home. And it's my wife's sister who had way too many children for all the wrong reasons and doesn't have any of them now. She lost custody of all of them. And you're probably saying, that's too much personal stuff. No, it is what it is. But she has two daughters, um, two, two different fathers, and they grow up in a household by white folks, and they're biracial. They're beautiful girls. They're absolutely beautiful. White people want to have the color of their skin. Okay, they're just they're absolutely lovely. They're they're pretty. They're well behaved, but their parent or parents uh, had no interest in them. So we were going to take them both in, and she chose to go with one of her friends. Her friends at school's parent adopted one of them, and the younger of the two are with her grandparent. The older one, she is about to graduate high school and start college. And you know me, I've, I've done always said <laughs> college is a scam, okay? And you're not guaranteed a job outside of the college. I'm a living testimony to that advanced and uh, extracurricular activity in terms of education. And even with the high GPA, it still didn't do well. So none of that stuff is promised, none of it. And you all think that that's a, a barrier for you to not to try to trade. Oh, well, nothing's guaranteed and you might lose your money. You might, yeah, everything's a potential risk. You might die on your way to work tomorrow or Monday or whatever it is. God forbid. Nothing. No, no man is promised tomorrow. You aren't. I'm not. But my niece, I told her when uh, when I bought the 2019 Corvette, I told her, I said, uh, it was in June of 2017. It was a company lease that I've since paid off. But the uh, I took her for a ride in it. I told her, I said, listen, when you get out of school, as long as you have not done anything foolish with your life, don't get into the drugs. Don't get hemmed up with some boy. Don't be getting pregnant. Don't be doing those stupid things that most people do at your age. If you get to that point, I will get you your first car. And I'll help you if you want to go to college. If you want to do that, that's fine. But don't make any poor cho choices with your life early on. Well, she graduates next year. She got a really high GPA. She's in sports. She's a beautiful young woman, and I can't wait to invest in her because I want her. I want her to have every advantage. I was hoping that we could adopt her, but you know, 
friends are friends. And I guess if you have a friendship that's started with the younger ages and the lower grades, it becomes like a sisterhood type thing. So she chose there for the most part, you know, they've done all well. Uh, they don't live very lavishly and I've been wanting to do a lot of things for, her, but because if I did that, I would feel obligated to do that for the other kids that they have. And I don't really like their father. <laughs> Not that he's done anything to her, but I, I just, I can't wait for her to get to that point because I'm going to have her set up. She's going to be having every advantage given to her. That's what I'm talking about. Have something that you're accountable for outside yourself. It's easy to find that. Go out and find somebody that is in need of something. You want to learn how to trade really, really good? Find someone that you're going to invest 30%. Yeah, 30% after taxes. You're going to invest in them to acquire something for them. But don't let them know about it. That doesn't build entitlement mindset in them. And when you have it together for them, you bless them with it. You have no idea what that feels like. That sense of purpose, that sense of accomplishment, it feels so much better than just you making money in trades. It doesn't make any difference. Makes no difference at all. None. When you compare it to this. I was making over $560,000 a week. Week. When I was doing my mentorship. That shit don't feel like nothing compared to going out and buying someone their groceries when we're in the grocery store. You can see, you read them, their face. They don't have the money to, to pay for that stuff right now. And you watch them as you're walking through. I, I'm like a shark going through the aisles. And I'm looking for that person. Every time I'm there, I'm always looking for that person. Somebody in there, I'm going to read them. And their face, you can see on there, they're, just, they're talking to themselves, whispering. They see the, the sticker price on something. Box of baking soda. This is what most recently happened. A box of baking soda. Folks, think about that. That's nothing. That is nothing. Cigarettes cost more than that stuff. This woman picks it up, looks at the price and shakes her head and puts it back. Now, I don't know what she's wanting to buy that baking soda for. Is it something she really needs? Is she making cookies with it? You know, is she trying to refresh her refrigerator with it? Is she trying to clean the stovetop with lemon juice with it? I don't know. But when they are going up to the register, I'm trying to get myself in a position where I'm ready to be right behind them. That's the purpose. It's not because I'm going there to get milk and bread and all that other stuff, main staple. That's not why I'm there. I'm there to show up just at the right time to be an encouragement to them. That's what I'm doing. I'm not bragging. I'm not trying to take my reward from the times I'm doing it. I'm trying to encourage you to do something like this. And tell me what it feels like afterwards because it feels freaking great. When you're right behind her and she's up there and she's got her card, you know what I'm talking about. And she's got her head down and she's putting her little pin in, looking at, being looked at by everybody, judging her. <sighs> Look at you, drain on society. Folks, I grew up on welfare. I grew up on it. My family, I didn't have a lot of money. I know what it's like to have that kind of stuff and need it. And then you come up behind them and you whisper to the cashier, don't let her pay for it. And they cancel the transaction. And then you place that box of baking soda, the biggest box that's on the shelf. And you say, don't worry, it's, it's covered. And they turn around and they start crying. And they look around like it can't be happening. If you trade... If you try to succeed to make more for yourself, that's all it'll ever be. And you'll never be satisfied. No amount of money is. But even the smallest, even the smallest insignificant amount of money that you help someone with at the time when they don't even expect it ever to happen. And you walk into their life right at that, that moment. You're like an angel to them. You don't think that the father's going to give you a reward for that? Everything I have down here is nothing 
It's nothing. It's all loss compared to what I'm trying to get later on when I'm not in this flesh. If you do conduct your life like this and you try to reach other people's hearts, encourage them. I'm not saying turn them into traitors. I didn't say, hey, look, go to my YouTube channel. <laughs> that didn't happen. But these people are at their wits end. They can't make ends meet. What is she doing without that day? What is she trying to put off? Oh, you know, I don't need that so-and-so. I can't afford it right now. And when they grab a hold of you and they squeeze you and thank you, they don't know who you are, but they're so thankful that you stepped in their life at that very moment. Let me tell you something. That, that right there, you tap into that and you want to be successful for things like that. There is no limit. There is no fear because you're going to trade differently. You're going to think about things differently because it's not your money. It's not your money then. You'll be a better steward with it. You'll live a purpose-driven life. And those moments, those last forever. Those moments, she's going to go home. She's going to tell her husband, hey, you ain't going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. I saw how much baking soda was. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't, I couldn't justify spending that much on it. I put it back on the shelf. And this guy comes out of nowhere. Pays for the groceries I have in here and puts a bigger box of baking soda up there and says, it's covered. I would love to be a fly on the wall in that conversation. I would love to be a part of that moment where they share that testimony. And the Lord empowered you, me, whoever else that does these types of things gets all the glory. You're spending it wisely. So I want you to think like that. Think outside yourself. Because it's really ugly when it's just about you. It's not sexy. It's not cool. It's not encouraging. It's it's disgusting. There's no fruit in it. It just looks good outwardly to the people that think it is worthwhile. But when you buy nice cars, trucks, boats, RVs, homes, plural, that stuff wears off real fast. And that's why rich people that keep buying stuff all the time, they're miserable because they have no purpose. They serve no purpose in this world except for self-gratification. And what people think of them. And I'm leaving right before I become bigger than I want to be. I'm already really too too big for my britches in, in terms of the attention. I don't like all this attention. And I want to make sure you may not be able to hear me. There's a couple jets going over top. Give me a second here. Someone's going somewhere in style. <laughs> I'll be in. I'll be on the wings that's given to me by the Lord. I'm not going up here no more. <laughs> but uh, lost my train of thought. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I want to leave before it gets any bigger than it is. Too many people talk about me, even the supportive perspectives and I am not I just don't want to be that I don't want to be that and hopefully you know in November you will all have received what you were wanting to receive from me and most of you that don't think that you did receive it are the ones that's going to have to go back through the content the notes that you've taken if you've done so and do a lot of self reflection because that's what's holding you back it's not for a lack of trying on my part it's not for a lack of providing the content I did not hide it from you. I've laid it out here for you. I've proven it to you. I've shown you with live account. I've shown you with executions, both demo. I've talked about it before it happened. You've seen it. 
you've handled it now. You don't need any further evidence to, to go into further investigation for yourself to be able to apply it. But you're going to have to allow yourself the time and give yourself permission to not be able to pick it up right away because that's normal. It's going to feel complicated for the lazy folks. Oh, it's a perfect excuse for laziness. This is too complicated. It's overcomplication. It's not complicated. But if you want to know why it does what it does, that I teach that. If you want to go in and start finding something that gives you setups, I've already done that too. 2022 model, silver bullet. Come on now. You, you have no excuses. Multiple setups. I didn't give you a one-trick pony. I mean, you can apply it to every trading session. Any asset, every asset class, it's not limited to any one particular approach to trading. You can apply it to different time frames. You can apply it to whatever. I'm not going to co-sign crypto. It's the only thing I said I wasn't going to do because I don't have experience. Despite the fact that I have students that swear by it, I can't say, hey, because they said so. But in disclosure, I say that, but I have no evidence to support that personally. So therefore, I can't say anything like that. But in stocks, yes. In futures, yes. Commodities, yes. Bonds, yes. Currency futures, yes. Index futures, absolutely. So hopefully you've uh, got something out of this today. Hopefully I've uh, built you up and, and gave you some things to think about and take inventory in your personal life. And why are you trading? And what is your success for? If it's just for you, don't be surprised why it's so hard. Until next time, be safe.